my mom would ask me what I want to be when I grow up, and I would answer nothing close to what a Filipino mom would expect. In my country, it is rather admired to take a path in the field of medicine, law, politics, engineering, or anything that will later on give you a lucrative career, prestige, and a sense of significance in the society. Surely, earning a title is always a better choice given the economic status of my family. But then, there are some people who would rather pursue their passion while disregarding what the society deems relevant. Like me. So, back to when my mom would ask me what I would like to be when I grow up, I would say, I want to travel the world. So I did. If there is one thing that I despised as a flight attendant, that would be the drudgery of waking up at the strangest times of the day. Don't get me wrong, here is why. The nature of my job requires me to travel from one country to another, jumping from one time zone to the next almost every day. As a result, my body's biological clock is often disrupted resulting into fatigue, insomnia, and chronic jet lag, thus the difficulty of staying awake before and even during my working hours. In those moments of battling with my struggle to leave the comfort of my bed, I would find myself asking, why am I doing this? Why do I have to go to work? Who am I doing this for? And instantly, I would be reminded of my bills, my goals, my family, and my fear of the consequences I had to face if I was late for work or if I didn't show up. Sometimes I would question the meaning of my job or if the hard work is leading me to the path towards the proverbial success defined by the society we live in. How do you measure success? Is it that six digit paycheck? Is it in the form of material possessions? Is it in the number of awards gained in one's lifetime? In a different perspective, the answer would surely vary. Even today, I can't give a definite answer as to what success looks like or even feels like. But one thing is for sure, to those who were not born with a silver spoon like me, money is vital to survive, but it will never secure you peace of mind. After learning that, I could say that I am finally awake. challenges I had to face as a flight attendant is maintaining a healthy diet. Most of the time, I would skip meals or binge eat right before bedtime as a coping mechanism after a stressful day at work. It wasn't healthy, but given the demanding schedule of this job, it is almost impossible to eat at the right time. I lost count of the time that I had to skip meals so I can make it on time for work. 
In addition, I would also fall asleep with an empty stomach after a 24-hour duty. At some point, I knew that I wasn't treating my body right and it had to stop even if it meant leaving my job. Once I began having mindful eating habits, I started to feel better not only physically, but also from within. I was surprised by the benefits of healthy eating, not only to my physical health, but more importantly, to my mental health as well. There will come a point that your priorities do not align with your lifestyle any longer, and it is always best to put yourself first, especially your health. I've learned this the hard way, but no amount of money can give you a healthier life. Despite the amount of mental and physical detox available out there, more and more people are still getting sick, depressed, and unsatisfied with their lives. In a world where instant gratification is available at an arm's length, it is normal for humans to take the easiest way to get a reward, whether it's the shortcut way to prepare a meal, the fastest route to work, cashless payments, to choosing your grocery items from a nearby supermarket instead of buying it from the local flea market. I am all for the advancement of the society and the benefits of technology, but say for example, the existence of social media. I believe it is both a curse and a blessing. We announce the plans and dreams we have for ourselves online before it could even come to fruition, only to get praises in the form of likes or views for something that doesn't exist yet. Our generation have fallen into the trap of making more announcements than actually making more moves towards the achievement of a goal. Not only that, it is already proven that people who are addicted to social media have higher chances of having anxiety and depression. Why is that? I can only think of an answer. Social media A powerful tool for communication is sadly misused to portray a life far from reality which makes ordinary people who are doing their best to survive feel a sense of inadequacy and incompetence or that feeling of merely missing out. In reality, we should always look within and remind ourselves that what we see in social media is probably just the tip of the iceberg. So before we judge ourselves, for not doing good enough or others for the almost perfect lives they portray online. Remember, we never know what's beyond the screen. It is no secret that we have all been affected by the pandemic. Many have lost their lives and their jobs, while plans and life events were put on hold. The flow of our lives suddenly fell into an uncertain spiral and, for a time, hope was nowhere to be seen for most of us. It is in our nature to either fight or flight the stress caused by these unforeseen circumstances, but we can't deny that these abrupt changes definitely affected our mental health in one way or another. I myself for one have lost two family members during those times. It was a dark period in my life because, no matter how badly I wanted to go home, the borders were closed and I had no choice but to mourn alone. It is true what they say. The saddest moments of your life teaches you the greatest lessons. Those sorrowful times taught me that, while we are busy reaching for our dreams and chasing after material things, We have forgotten about our loved ones who are only getting old. We do not even pause and breathe for a moment to take a look at the beauty of what's right in front of us. The small things that truly matter. When our freedom to even touch our loved ones was taken from us, we were aching to know the next time we'll meet them again. Until there was no more next time. And yet, when we used to have so much freedom, We didn't even bother to call or pay them a visit. 
as we grow old. We realize that we have taken plenty of beautiful yet simple moments for granted. We learn that no amount of money can make up for the absence of our loved ones. So one day, I told myself that I was tired of going to bed and waking up alone. Being away from home for six years, missing important occasions and trying to keep my long distance relationship alive while trotting the globe can only go so far. So I took the biggest step to change the course of my life. I said no more to lonely nights in hotel rooms while I post a new profile photo with the background of the Eiffel Tower. I chose calm nights with my significant other over the company of strangers I could only work with for a day. I looked forward to living in peace, settled on ground to make more memories with the people I love and left the superficial life I was caught up with. If you could go back in time, what memory would you want to experience all over again and who are the people you want to share it with? was absolutely one of the best jobs in the world, but only for a time. I loved flying. I really did. It changed my life in ways that I will forever be grateful for it. My experiences made me the person I am today, somebody who has so much passion for life. However, like the clothes we outgrow when we were young, we also need to leave some things in the past no matter how much we love them. To make room for new opportunities, to make room for growth. That's when I knew that my purpose no longer aligned with the path I was taking. Of course, it is never easy to let go of something we've grown so used to, something we dearly love. But I'm a big believer that when we leave our comfort zone, a new life of endless possibilities awaits us. For me, it still holds true. As I create this video, it's been more or less two months since I left the skies. I'm finally living the life I've always looked forward to, an authentic, quiet life surrounded by nature as opposed to my old life as a flight attendant. In the past, my life was a constant takeoff and landing and I mostly stayed inside the aircraft for as long as I can remember. The noise from the engine, the endless call bells, a lot of full flights to name a few, are the things I couldn't wait to escape from when I finally decided to close this chapter of my life probably just like everyone else, I had no definite plans of leaving this job until life took a turn. It was a painful lesson, but I'm glad it happened. Sometimes I think that reality is masked in this cosmopolitan lifestyle that tricks you into believing that you still have time to change the direction of your life until you don't. I was afraid to be stuck in one place forever. I didn't want my passion to go to waste over a temporary sense of security. I started to question my purpose in this life, and I came to a conclusion that flying was only a piece of the puzzle to see the bigger picture. When you look in the mirror, are you proud of the person who is looking back at you? Are you proud of your choices, what you stand for? Sit on my bed, I got nothing to do Take out my phone one second, right to you I'm really bored Please don't ignore Started as fun, now I randomly know You love rainy days and you still live at home It's cool to see You're real with me I know we've never met And things like this never last But every time you text back my eyes I think I really like you, but I never say it straight to your face I think I really like you, but I don't wanna repeat my mistakes And I guess I'm kinda scared of meeting you in person Cause you're really cute, I think instead I'll slide into you The M's like I said, I think I really like you, but I never say it straight to your face Few weeks.
tricks and we're keeping this up Difficult to deny we're on the cusp of something more Can't be ignored I'll let you know every part of me All of the nuances no one else sees We talk all night I read them type Oh no 